Okay, welcome back to Engineering Made Easy. This is our third lesson in our series on thermodynamics. Um, it's going to be a short lesson today. Basically, we're just going to be covering some quick definitions um, that we need to know um, with relation to some thermodynamic processes and systems. So to start, let's define a system in the context of thermodynamics. So whenever we think of a thermodynamic system, we are thinking of an isolated quantity of mass or an isolated region that we're going to analyze. Um, and typically we select what quantity of mass or region we're going to be analyzing. So we kind of define our system boundaries when we are analyzing something from a thermodynamic perspective. Something that we'll walk through in a lot of examples as we go through the course, um, but just something to start thinking about. Um, that a lot of times when we're working a problem or when we're looking at a specific um, like a tank or a turbine, um, our ability to analyze what's going on is going to be based on how well we can define our system. So the first type of system that we have is a closed system. Now a closed system is a fixed quantity of mass um, with no input or output of mass during the process. So, for example, we could think of um, like a closed tank of compressed gas. Um, let's say this is hydrogen in here. That's a closed system. Now, there's no mass coming in or out, um, but for example, we could put some uh, heat into our system and heat up our tank, and maybe we would increase the pressure and the temperature, for example. So we can still analyze the closed system um, from a thermodynamic basis, but there's no mass flow. That's the key. Now an isolated system is a closed system where energy cannot cross our system boundary. So if we have, for example, a box of water, and it's totally insulated. So there's no energy flow. Now, it's going to be pretty rare that we analyze an isolated system because they're not very interesting from a thermodynamic perspective. Pretty much all we can put into this is we can change the volume, um, which might increase the pressure and the temperature, but we're not going to work with isolated systems too often. Now, the final type of system that we're going to deal with, and kind of the, the most important, um, is an open system, also known as a control volume. So it's defined as a region in space with mass flow in and out. Um, some examples of that are a turbine, a compressor, a pump. Um, so you might see something like this farther down the line in the course. Um, maybe we've got a compressor here. Um, we've got some work coming into it, and we've got mass flowing through it. So this is a compressor. And let's say we've got some mass flow rate coming in and some mass flow rate coming out. Now, um, this might be your given problem, and then it would be our job to define our control volume. So for example, um, we could define our control volume as being the compressor itself. Just make a dashed line around it. And once we delve deeper into a lot of topics on energy, and um, energy flow, um, it'll make a lot more sense how we're going to want to define these control volumes. And then let's cover a few different types of processes. So these are mostly just definitions here. Um, we have isothermal processes um, where temperature remains constant, isobaric processes where pressure remains constant, um, and isochoric processes where our specific volume remains constant kind of an obscure one, um, one you won't see, see too often. Um, an adiabatic process or an adiabatic system um, is where you have no heat transfer in or out of what you're analyzing. So important distinction here, um, adiabatic and isothermal are not the same thing. Seems like they should be, but they're not. So we can have an adiabatic process where the temperature is changing. We can also have a process that is isothermal but not adiabatic. 
Um, and we'll probably see both of those in examples somewhere later in the course. And finally, a steady flow process is where we have fluid flowing through a control volume steadily. The way you can think about that is if you have like a pipe um, and you have fluid flowing through it, if there's fluid already filled throughout the pipe, there's not going to be any accumulation of mass within that control volume. So the flow is not fluctuating, it's steady. Pretty self-explanatory, um, but something that will be defined, um, or a lot of problems will use that um, specification that we'll see. So quick lesson today, but important stuff to keep in mind as we move forward. As always, if you have any questions, leave some in the comments. And thanks again for watching.